Hi, Bobby Herzberg again from the Mercatus Center at George Mason University. And we continue on in our discussion of mainline versus mainstream economics uh, by examining the work of Eleanor and Vincent Ostrom. Um, their work spanned uh, many decades. They're probably most famous, Eleanor Ostrom, as a Nobel Prize winner in 2009 for her work on common pool resources. Uh, but their work actually starts much earlier and uh, begins with the work of Vincent Ostrom, um, her husband and colleague over her entire career in political science. It was impressive that, uh, as I say, Lynn o won the Nobel Prize in economics because, in fact, she served her entire career in a political science department working on the issues of how to understand economic dilemmas of common pool resource distribution. You really needed to understand uh, the politics and the underlying uh, structure of individuals and how they might come together and self-govern. This was also the work of Vincent Ostrom, and we see it beginning in his career with the work on constitutional theory and especially work on federalism and notions of polycentricity. He developed those by looking at what had happened in the American Constitution, the American founding, and noted that if, in fact, you could allow people's diverse interests to form at the correct level. You could deliver policy uh, goods and uh, resources much more effectively by simply allowing people to, in essence, vote with their feet, to use the economics of choosing over public goods just as they would use those same decision-making calculus to choose across private goods. Why assume there is one political solution that fits all? And so in looking at how and people organized, polycentricity focuses our attention on multiple levels of decision making. Instead of requiring everything be made at a single level, the good or the type of public service that we are interested in finds the correct level for that. So for a lot of local type services like parks and recreation and uh, police services or education, it might be quite a localized level. And neighborhoods distinguish one another by the way in which they organize those different bundle of goods. But as we move to more generalized goods that we may not use as frequently or that may require a larger scale in order to be efficiently delivered, we might then want to move up to the state level or to the national level or even to the international level in an effort to try to find the appropriate way to deliver the exact right mix of goods. And what the Ostroms found in their theoretical and their empirical work was that you could adjust across all of these, that the citizen became the core, but the citizen could be a citizen in all of these different levels and service delivery operations simultaneously. And so that opened up a much richer and more complex way of organizing. You didn't have to centralize to get the efficiency of the UNIGOV uh, arrangements that were happening in public administration. You could instead um, try and find certain services that you wanted at the UNIGOV level, but many that would be kept more at the neighborhood level and um, attached and allow people the ability to exit, move to a different neighborhood, move to a different bundle of goods, just as we let them in the marketplace choose a different toothpaste or a different color of shirt. Um, so why not take advantage of that? And the Ostroms very much believe that you could self-govern, um, that people could organize the exact bundle of goods uh, that would be available within those neighborhood units, and then to even contract up to higher levels when, in fact, the need presented itself. Now, Eleanor Ostrom enters at this point and starts doing an extensive set of empirical work on polycentricity and 
service delivery, uh, police studies, education uh, services delivery, um, all kinds of uh, parks and cultural uh, services as well, and notes that in fact there is a myriad or different types of arrangements that can be made. And people were very creative in finding the correct arrangements for them if you let them. This insight suggested that institutional diversity was one of the ways that people both self-governed and found solutions to very complicated social dilemmas. So in moving to diverse ways of doing it, people could very flexibly find a different rule if that rule was not working for their particular group. But that depended on other levels of government permitting the local levels and, and uh, uh, people at those levels to be able to actually carry out uh, the policy. So it's important that the national government permits the local or state government to organize uh, at that level on delivery of that service. If they don't permit that, then we don't get the kind of creative diversity and low conflict sorting that they found took place in federalism. This points Lynn then to her work on common pool resources where she finds not only in the United States but then around the world people are capable of finding new institutional arrangements that can effectively solve those social dilemmas the most complex, whether or not a fishery continues to operate, whether or not a common field is overtaxed and thus uh, start to destroy uh, through overuse, whether or not a forest uh, is deforested by people using it uh, too, um, too aggressively out of economic self-interest. And she found successes and she found failures all around the world when people were faced with these kinds of dilemmas. And out of that, she developed a theory that won her the Nobel Prize in economics because of its insight into uh, the diversity and uh, capability of self-governing um, that she observed around the world. And she found eight des key design principles um, if you had those eight key principles in place, then frequently people would be able to solve these most egregious dilemmas that economics had predicted would result in absolute failure. We can see that with the work of the Ostroms, the complexity that they incorporate is a far cry from the sort of point prediction that had been so frequent in mainstream economics. Um, it's complex, it's difficult, uh, but it tells us so much more about what people are really capable of, and thus we think mainline economics, at, uh, as we practice at George Mason University, is critical for understanding um, economic problems and dilemmas of today. Thank you.